ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. For one, Andre. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorry. No speaking wish. Tell me. Goodbye and good night. All two on bar. It's still real to me, damn it. Gummy, yeah. This is the worst town I've ever been in. All three. The Moss Covers. Three handle family credential. Unchained.media presents the B Plus Podcast with your host, Greg Unchained. It's me, Austin. It was me all along, Austin. Number four, Armbar. I will never retire. I still got 200. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the B-Plus Podcast. I am your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Monday, so you know what that means. It's time for the Impact Zone, where I sit down with Jay and we talk everything Impact. How are you doing, Jay? Good, good, Greg. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. Uh, getting ready to go to a show tonight. Uh, I know you went to a show last night, right? Yeah, Wrestling Go. One of the How local- was that? Oh, it was, it was a small crowd, but it was a good show. Like yeah, That was the one with Dalton Castle, yeah? Yeah, Dalton Castle from Ring of Honor. I actually had a good five minute chat with him before the show before the show started. So, all round top bloke. Yeah, no, that's heaps good. I've I've heard good things about. I've been watching him since he was in Chikara with the whole Ashley Remington break on one thing. He's a, he's a pretty cool dude. But what, 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 why didn't you get him on the show, man? What are you doing? Well, he had a massive one off, and I was just chatting to him. And my mate said something about a podcast, and I ended up buying a shirt from him. And yeah. he said. If you ever start doing video recording podcasts, link me to it, and you better be wearing that goddamn shirt that you've bought off me. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Are you wearing the shirt now? Um, I know we're not doing video, but are you <laughs> wearing the shirt? Uh, I can't lie, and I'm not wearing the shirt because I've put it in the wash. But <laughs> All right. Well, Dalton, if you're listening, you can be very disappointed in Jay because he's not wearing the shirt. So, I-, I-, I managed to just finish watching Impact. I'm a bit late with it this week because of all the G1 craziness that's going on. But I've just finished watching Impact, and uh, it was a pretty good show this week. Um, well, as I've been overseas, I've been trying to keep up with it a little bit, and I've been impressed since I've since I've been away. Like from Slammiversary, they've just they're just on the up. Right. So you've just gotten back from holidays, but you have caught up on everything. So what what did you think of Slammiversary? Especially, uh, it was. Probably one of the best pay-per-views I've seen this year. Yeah, I, I, I put um, it definitely up there as one of the best pay-per-views of the year, for sure. Definitely, if you're comparing Impact and WWE, it's been the best show of the year. Um, yeah. I, I can't really can't really compare it to New Japan because I don't really watch New Japan, so... Yeah, and then I, I think even, even compared to like Ring of Honor, I think it's probably the best American pay-per-view I've seen this year. Yeah, potentially. I'd have to check all my notes and everything, but from just from memory, I'm thinking that Slammiversary was the best pay per view so far this year in America. That's yeah, they just produce match matches of the years, pretty much. Yeah, there were there were a good three match of the year candidates on there at least. That tag team match, oh man, just everything, just yeah. everything. Yeah, but we should probably we should probably get to this week. So this week started with the OGs attacking LAX backstage. I really liked it. It was kind of a throwback. Like, you don't get a lot of that stuff anymore. Yeah, see, I liked it, but some of the stuff they used to as weapons, it kind of, it kind of made me laugh more than anything. Yeah, like the little the little trash bins, like the really little ones like that you would see in the plastic in like a ones. office. Yeah, or the little the, plastic or Kmart the, bins. Or the, co- or the coat hangers getting chucked around. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Like I, 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 I enjoyed that segment, but it was hilarious with some of the stuff they were used. 
Yeah, I wonder where they were. Like, it was obviously some kind of backstage area, but it also kind of looked like a lobby. Like, maybe they'd shot it earlier in the day before people had come through or something. And I don't know, it was it was a weird area, and then yeah, they rolled, like, up the stairs. Yeah, they would have had to, because it was like a, like a bar. Yeah. But, you know, when you're in, like, a... I don't know what the arena that they're in is like, and, you know, there could be, like, an upstairs part. So, like, the wrestling could have been happening downstairs while they were filming that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it could have been anywhere, really, but they might have even done it elsewhere. Might not have been done at the arena. Yeah. But it, it was fun. I liked... The, the brawling up the stairs was fun. I, I just thought... It just adds... It adds another element to the angle instead of having it as just, like, a stale angle that's been going on for for some time it's just reinventing it kind of yeah so so you think that they're venturing into territory where okay we could start getting sick of this feud because i'm i'm still really enjoying it i think they've still got a long way to go before i'd be sick of it. not saying that i'm sick of it like i'm just saying like they're just trying to trying to find new ways to to keep it going yeah which is good Yeah. yeah and then later in the show you know conan's challenging them uh, sorry, later in the show when Conan comes out and cuts his promo and, and King and the OGs end up on the balcony. Yep. King was saying, you know, why don't we take this to the streets? So it's kind of, it's very much the OGs don't want to do this in a ring because LAX are superior wrestlers. In the ring, as as you think they should be being the young, the younger wrestlers. Yeah, the young athletic guys, whereas the, the, the OGs want to sort of make it a fight. They want to go you know, no rules, no holds barred, and make it a fight so that they can get the upper hand. Because in a fight, experience is going to win. Exactly. I think it's a really good story that they're telling, not only from that perspective, but also... Or, or, I mean, we've talked about the cinematic stuff already and how it's like a movie. They've shied away from that the last few weeks, which has yeah, been a bit it's, upsetting. I, I haven't seen seen as, ma- as much of it compared to, yeah. compared to recent weeks. Where they'll- yeah, so I'd, I'd really like them to go back to that. More of the more of the uh, clubhouse bits would be would be nice to see, or even yeah, some some stuff on the streets would be really good too. Yeah, considering they are groups from the street, <laughs> it would make sense. Yeah, definitely. And then we got what happened after that: the Desi Hit Squad versus Bone Soldier and Petey Williams. Right. So, did you watch last week's Impact? Yeah, I did. Between yeah, um, so this- where Taji Ishimori versus Petey Williams. Yeah, and so they set up the match there. So the Desi Hit Squad attacked them after the match when they were doing the whole handshake bit, which was and which was so random. What I add, it was random, but I like random things like that to set up things for the future. Like you, you, you only need to a, a quick throwaway line. Like they were spending too much time in the ring, and and we wanted our spotlight, so we came and took it. You know, and it's see wrestling one hundred and one. When when the when the Desi Hit Squad, obviously when the Bone Soldier and Petey Williams come out, were you like? Be like, I definitely think that Ishimori and Petey Williams are going to win this match, just because it's them. Did you get that vibe off this match, or was it just me? Yeah, no, I was. I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I, I think that. I think yeah. In in my mind, I was like the the Bone Soldier and and Petey will probably win this, but. Definitely thought that as well, the Desi Hit Squad still had a chance because they're a team. They're an actual team. And the, the announcers did a good job of selling that too. Like, this is yeah, a they team. Yeah, did, they did sell that. Two guys that. two guys that don't really know each other that well. So, Could you see Ishimori and Williams being tag team champions? No. No? No. I don't think they look like a team, you know? I just don't. I mean, what's I, their hook? What's their hook? Yeah. It's also the fact that Bone Soldier might not be sticking around in Impact for a while. Who knows yeah. how long he's going to stick around for? I mean, if they if they patched Petey Williams over as a Bullet Club member, right? Bullet Club Canada <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, not that there's already Canadian Bullet Club, but... It could work. I guess it could work. I But it just seems weird that, yeah, here's this Bullet Club Bone Soldier guy that's teaming just randomly with Canadian hero Petey Williams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, but like, the, I've seen Stranger Things happen in professional wrestling, so... Oh yeah, there's been definitely been weirder combinations, but the Canadian Destroyer straight popped up into the modified DDT from Taiji Ishimori was a really good little finish to the match. Oh, that looked like it hurt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I'm like that guy's not getting up after those two. If you ever wanted but... to be a wrestler, that'd kind of turn you off. <laughs> oh yeah, no. So I 
I'm training and, you know, I've trained before and I've gotten back to training. And the thing that scares me the most is, is neck bumps, like things like pile drivers and stuff like that. And the idea of trying to, the idea of trying to do the backflip into a neck bump, that's, yeah. I don't know how these guys do it. Yeah. Like, and the thing is the the Canadian destroyer has become like a common move on the indies too. Oh, well, there was a time when they were saying it was too dangerous, weren't they? A few years ago. I, I don't know. I think it's too dangerous. Like, as a fan, I cringe when I see you, th- those neck bump that, things. That, that Canadian Destroyer me. was crazy as well. The, yeah. Petey Williams did give. That was absolutely nuts. He landed on, like, the side of his head. Yeah. Yeah, it scares the hell out of me. And you just... Even, even like, the Vertebreaker. Like, I think last week, who was it? One of the OGs uh, gave... It was a homicide, I think. Gave the Vertebreaker to the jobber. And... It just, it looked like it killed yeah. him. Like, I was like, how are you walking after that? Yeah. So. It's, yeah. You you understand why WWE tries to stay away from their moves. But then again, it, yeah, looks, a little, it looks awesome. It does. It does. Like, I, I, I'm in two minds about it. Because I'm like, I want these guys to have super long careers. And, you know, they're adults. Like, they know what they're doing. They can do what they want. But then at the same time, I'm just like, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of the style du jour at the moment. Yeah, it's it. I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying, like it's. Yeah, I'm in two minds about it. But then we got so obviously with the hit squad losing, you get to see Gama Singh berate the Desi hit squad. Just losing your mind. They're, they're in for a beating. I think. I don't think we. I think they'll play yeah. up during the match as well that that um, Gama Singh beats them with a belt. Yeah. <laughs> if they lose, yeah, a well, match, they lots- get belted. There's been a lot of the backstage skits where he's just like slapping them, and that's when they've been winning. Yeah, like so, he's uh, it's a different gimmick. It's it's it's, it's I un- like it. At first, I was a bit. I like at it. At first, I was it's a weird. bit skeptical about it. I was like, oh, yeah, uh, here we go, another Jinder Mahal. But no, it was it's good. Yeah, I like the way they've gone with Jinder Mahal too. To be honest, he's now Kevin Owens personal guru i know it's a different company but i just i thought that was fun <laughs> i don't know if you caught up on wwe while you were away as well but he's now kevin owens personal guru so that's lots of fun. i'm the impact guy not the wwe guy greg <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'll i'll keep a good quality show we got pentagon cutting a promo as he does in spanish for his upcoming match with matt seidel basically says that in his universe there is only pain and you may have three eyes but i have two words Cerro Miedo. I, I thought it didn't really make sense, but he's cutting a promo in Spanish, so how much sense can it make? Also, uh, did I miss something from last week? Where did they get um, Matt Seidel and Pentagon? Or was it just a match yeah, that no, they've just, just chucked on the just card? A random match. Yep, just a random match that they've thrown on okay. the card because Seidel lost his X-Division title. And so he, I think he challenged maybe. I, I don't know. I, I saw some stuff like on Twitter and whatnot that was like, you know, Matt Seidel looking to regain momentum against Pentagon kind of thing. So I, I think that's all it was. He was like, I've lost. I can't go straight back for my title. I have to build momentum. Who better than Pentagon? So Well, it is a big match to... Big momentum. It was. It, momentum. It felt that way. It felt like a big match to just kind of throw away in the middle of an impact. But, but that's what I mean. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, where did it come from? Because, but obviously, you, you also had the world title on the line, so you couldn't chuck it in the main event but just chuck it on next week's yeah. card or something because yeah it could have main evented next week Sidell and back. Pentagon yeah. is a big match it is at least I mean I think for the fans that are tuning into Impact at the moment that's a, a very big match definitely if they're not tuning in then you're missing out but <laughs> yeah no people anyone listening that that's that's the the problem with having the Impact Zone become its own podcast as opposed to being a part of the All the Rest podcast is if people are like, ah, oh, I don't care about Impact, they might just skip this. <laughs> so, but if you're listening and you're not watching Impact, you should definitely be watching Impact. We also got uh, another interview by. Uh, so, do you know how to say her name? Uh, Kira Hogan. No, 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 no. I mean, obviously, you got Ali and Kira Hogan there, but uh, the the interviewer, Alicia A. Tout or A. Toot? A. Toot or something. A. A. Toot. I I don't know. I've heard it said like three or four different ways on podcasts and what have you. So 
I have no idea. I, I, let's just call her Alicia. I'll, I'll, I'll I guess. try and find some videos later where they've pronounced the last name because they just usually go to Alicia. So yeah, probably because her last name is so damn confusing. <laughs> uh, so it's it's not even like a weird name or anything. It's it's only like five letters, <laughs> but it's just I don't know I'm how stumped. to say it. Yeah. So Alicia's interviewing Ali and Kira Hogan, and basically Ali's asking for a one-on-one match with. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, Ali's asking for the one-on-one match with Sue Young. She says Tessa is wrong about her. It doesn't have to be a title match. Leave the title at home. And then it, Kira Hogan says, but bring the bridesmaids and bring the maid of honor. Bring the whole undead family and bring Tessa if you need to as well. Your time has come. And Ali's like, no, your time is up. I thought that was weird. <laughs> your time has come, no. <laughs> What's the difference? Is up. Yeah, um, I guess there is a bit of a difference. It just It just felt kind of tacky. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I think I liked I liked Kira Hogan using Sue Young's catchphrase against her. I liked that. And then Ali went and goes, "No, your time is up." It was like maybe Tessa's right. Maybe this chick just wants the spotlight, and she can't let Kira Hogan have the last word. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. But uh, like there was layers to it. It was I I, I found it sort of rushed. I think it was a bit rushed bit of yeah. a rush se- segment but in saying that i think tessa blanchard sets a standard for women's wrestling in impact so i'm a bit yeah. biased yeah tessa's doing a real good job on, on impact like i mean she had a match against alicia edwards which is up next we'll talk about it in a second and yeah just crazy good for alicia edwards you know what i mean so let's let's have a look at austin aries had a promo as well this was a real good promo austin aries is is a, a king on the microphone he's he's on fire ever since so he originally he started at impact and then obviously he moved to the wwe see i didn't i didn't really didn't really like his work in impact beforehand but now okay. it's just on another level like I, I think that experience in the wwe has helped him a bit it's just, yeah. He he would never say that. <laughs> I, I believe it has. He, I know he went he went to the WWE already fantastic, and it wasn't because he wasn't just an Impact guy. Like he'd done all the indies, you know. And then when he when he left WWE, he got real serious about doing the indies because he's like, okay, look, I've had my cup of tea in in WWE, and it's given me that exposure. More people know who I am now, but. I need to make this a living without WWE. And so he's really hit the ground running and he's had a fantastic indie career since returning. That's what I mean. Like he's just gone from strength to strength. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I don't know if anything in WWE actually helped him other than just giving him more exposure. I I could be wrong. Not trying to say that it's helped him become a better wrestler. Just saying the experience in the WWE has guided him to become more indie more of an indie sort of I've sort of lost the word for it to describe it like he's an advocate for doing it outside the yes, system now that's pretty much what I'm trying yeah. to say I just couldn't find the word but um yeah no I, I, I think I think yeah. the experience where WWE have kind of shafted him a bit and he's just learned from that and just excelled in the Indies and impact yeah, uh, yeah, excelled is the right word. He's he's gone, yeah, crazy good indie career. His whole belt collector thing. I, I, we talked about it before on the show. Like, how great of a gimmick is the belt collector? Because now you guarantee yourself wins wherever you go. That's yeah, well, smart. Not that he wouldn't have been winning. He would have been winning anyway. But it gives exposure too. Like he had the World Series Wrestling Championship with him on a uh, Fox News interview. Yeah, it just gives exposure to them other indie talents as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I liked what Brian Cage was doing as well when he did the whole world tour thing. When he was going around doing all the interviews and stuff. I remember when it would have been, what, a month ago, before he had the big match with Congo Kong, he was doing the world tour. And so they aired they aired a match from Australia. They aired a match from Japan. They aired a match from England, I think, where he was traveling around the world, traveling around the Indies. And he'd have a match with someone in their local promotion, and then they'd put that footage on Impact. Yeah, yeah, I do now. Yeah, I love those things that that Impact are doing. It makes them so different, and and it like we say here at the B Plus, the wrestling world is getting smaller because of the internet, because of the streaming services, and Impact are really embracing that and the whole indie vibe. And Impact have become kind of like a king of the indies. People talk about 
oh, they're never going to be competition for the WWE. I think they've finally accepted that, and they're like, we just want to compete with Ring of Honor. Yeah, which is a smart move. Like, People have got to realize that no one's going to be able to compete with the WWE until they've got Vince McMahon money. Impact yeah. never had Vince McMahon money. They just had someone that gave them a bit of money, and they just blew it last time. They've learnt from last time, or well, their owners now have learnt from their from the previous owners of what not to do, and that's to yeah, sign absolutely. old WWE stars that have probably got about a year or two left in them that no one really wants to see anymore. I think they're they're more working towards ah, oh, there's an indie guy, we'll bring him in because people want to see him. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned it last week on the show when I talked about the uh, GWN moment of the week because I'm normally not a big fan of the GWN moment of the week, but they've kind of shifted. So you'll remember a month or so ago, it was things like they'd have Jeff Hardy and Sting, you know? And it's like, why are you having this as your moment of the week when those are global, massive, historic, legendary superstars? And then you're going to go from that to showing us KM and Falabar versus the Desi Hit Squad? <laughs> I mean... It, it makes your show now look really bad because you're like, look what we used to be. But the last few weeks they've had, like, what did they have last week? They showed the Young Bucks against Motor City Machine Guns. Yes, they did. I think it was. When I think that's what the they The Young showed. Bucks weren't called the Young Bucks. No, when they were Generation yeah. Men, of course. Yeah. And and I thought it was great because it's like, hey, look, they're, what they're showcasing is, look, this is a group who – used to wrestle for us and now they're the biggest name in wrestling exactly right so they're instead of focusing on look we can get these guys from the, from the who used to be stars elsewhere they're saying look at the stars we made and it's gonna work right? it's gonna start working yeah and and so it, it's and then it makes you think oh well who's who is on the show now because they might be you know the next bullet club they might be the next wwe champion so i gotta watch and and it's way smarter Far smarter strategy. Focus on the future, not the past. Yep. Always. Yeah, and it's going to keep working. Yeah, absolutely. So we've we've gotten way off the show. So let's bring it back. Austin Aries promo about Eddie Edwards. Basically, he's setting up the story that they're going to tell fantastically during the main event about Eddie Edwards becoming a lunatic and Austin not really wanting to get in the ring with Eddie Edwards now because if he wanted if he wanted to get into the ring with Eddie Edwards, he wanted to get in the ring with the old Eddie Edwards who was a wrestler. Yeah. But now, now the guy's gone crazy. He doesn't know what to expect. Yeah. I thought it was a really good, really good setup. And they told them. I thought it was a really good setup for the match. Yeah, they've just. He's just built it perfectly, pretty much. Yeah. Because Eddie is a psycho. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm still curious where they're going with Eddie's character, but we'll get to that in the main event. We get another little backstage bit with Grado asking why Joe wasn't there for the hot tag and asks them if they were hugging. They were totally hugging, by the way. That's not how you hold a person back. Can they just get this angle over and done <laughs> with? Please. Really? I'm enjoying it. Please. I, d- I think Eli... Do you know what they're doing? They've put Eli Drake in this angle because he's only re for a month. He's going to go somewhere else. I thought he re-signed for two years. It was only a, it was only a short-term deal till the end of August. I'm pretty sure we did... Oh, we discussed well, this on the podcast about a month ago. Yeah, no, I thought he signed that one, and then they. I thought he he got another one that that was while they were negotiating, and then he did re-sign a longer term one after that. Um, well, I haven't seen anything on that. I could be mistaken, but I was pretty sure that I saw that, like when Rich Swan signed and stuff. Eli Drake had signed a long term one, and Tessa Blanchard. But but I could be completely wrong. See, because what I was thinking was I was thinking they obviously shot this while they were still in negotiations, so they're using this as, like, filler while they were figuring out whether he was going to stick around or not. Um, no, the news is that I've just had a bit of a bit of a quick research. Done some Google foo? Yeah, done a quick Google research, and it's still till, they, they reckon, till at least the end of September, they reckon, max. I mean, look, if he's leaving, why are you have Okay, yeah, if he's leaving, why are you having him waste away in a Grado story when you could be using him to really put over Austin Aries or really put over someone else at the top? Yeah. Unless they're going to make Joe Hendry a top player pretty soon after Eli Drake. Well, they need to get him out of this angle with bloody Grado. 
Yeah. So it, it seems to me like they're going towards a Grado heel turn, like Grado's going to be the jealous boyfriend. Well, if, it may, if it makes Grado a bit of an entertainer, out. then I'm all for it. At the moment, I, I like Grado, I man. We disagree on Grado so much. I don't enjoy Grado in Impact. Yeah. I just think he's a pushover, and then you go watch him on the on the other indie scenes, and he's a world champion. See, I like Grado on Impact. This is where we're different, right? I like Grado on Impact. I think he's really good at the comedy stuff. I think comedy stuff is essential to a show. And and so I like his work in Impact. And then I don't like like he's the he was the world champion in World of Sport. And when I clicked that on for the first episode, I'm like, I can't take this guy seriously. That's what I mean. Like because of Impact, I can't take him serious anymore. Yeah. I've just But I mean look at you want to take that guy seriously? He's so good at the stuff that he does in Impact. I don't know. I, I think we're just going to disagree on that yeah. one. Because <laughs> we'll I agree, like we'll, funny Grado. We'll agree to disagree. <laughs> Look, if you if you think that Grado can be better, I want you to send me some clips or whatever. Because, I, yeah, I'm just not buying it. I, 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 I like Grado in that role. I just think he could be better. But like I said, he's we'll- forever he's forever fat English Santino Morella to me. <laughs> So we, we'll just agree to disagree on that subject. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so then we get the Tessa versus Alicia Edwards match, which I referenced just before. And Tessa is so strong. She's like a modern day Beth Phoenix. Yeah. Well, she, Except just, she's uh, better in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Well, I mean, Beth Phoenix, I don't know, but she's, she's strong. Like she deadlifts. I mean, Alicia Edwards is like, you know, tiny. Yeah, but still, it's still impressive yeah. to me. Whenever I would like to see Tessa Blanchard versus Bianca Belair. Yeah. I think that would be really fun. But again, that's another company, so we're not going to see that for at least two years unless Bianca Belair does something terrible to get released. <laughs> or Tessa gets signed by... Well, no, she's she's on contract now, man. She's locked down for two that's years. That's what I'm she's saying. She's the so cornerstone. Another two years. Unless, yeah, not going to see it for a while. Unless Tessa fucks up somewhere. We've mentioned it before. I love the the DDT that she uses, and she gets the win with that. And yeah, Alicia Edwards is not the best when it comes to stepping between the ropes and putting on an exciting match. Or, or I mean, passable, yeah, but not entertaining. You know? Yeah. And this was entertaining, so I put that. Con- <laughs> this was entertaining, so I put that entirely on Tessa. Yeah. Uh, well, she's proven it week after week with the matches yeah. she puts on. She can make anyone which, look good in the ring, I, I think. Yeah, which considering, I mean, she's not she's not a rookie by any means, but she hasn't been wrestling for a long time. No, but she's she has been training for a long time. Yeah, been, I'm gonna have to look been, it up. Like when she been in third generation superstar, you'd think pretty much growing up she would have been just trained. Well, being around. Them, Right. The whole, around the well, whole remember, industry. Sometimes they don't, right? Like, sometimes, yeah, she's grown up in the wrestling industry, but sometimes, you know, wrestling families are like, no, we don't want you to train. Yeah, well, that's true. Especially with their girls. So you never know, really, how much she's actually trained. But she's been wrestling since 2014. So, you know, that's only she's four st- years. She still is a rookie. Well, you don't, I mean, rookie would be like two years, I'd say, or whatever. But Steve Austin says that, you know, you don't really get your shit together until you've been doing it for five years. And then when you've been doing it for 10 years, that's when it really clicks, right? And, I mean, I, I tend to take Stone Cold Steve Austin's word for it because he's one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. And, yeah, he always says that when he's interviewing wrestlers. He's like, how, how long have you been doing this, man? Because I always say you don't get it until you've been doing it for five years. So, Tessa's been doing it for four. And she already is, like you said, makes everyone look good. Like her matches go from that good to great range. Yeah, she carries. She carries. I don't think she's had any. Yeah, I don't think she's had any incredible matches, right? That you'd put at the very, very top end. Of course, but look, but but she's got. She's only got what's in front of her. So it does make it hard. Like chuck me in a match for Charlotte, and they'll they'll produce a freaking ten star match out of five stars. Well, that's. That's what I was going to say. Like, it, it does make you think, like, if she's only been gone for four years, like, how great would it be to see her in, in another three years, her and Charlotte? Like, that would be such a great yeah. match. Like, I'm, I'm I'm getting excited for what's to come yeah. for Tessa. As everyone is, that's Yeah, which is what Impact, I think, is because I'm, I'm excited for what's to come for LAX as well. 
right? Like, I'm bummed that we don't get to see LAX versus the Young Bucks on that cruise. Oh, it's... Um, I wish they had it streamed or something. I wish, like, you could watch it on a... <laughs> yeah. I wish Chris Jericho went, yeah, guys, this is a website, pay 10 bucks for it. Well, he said it's it's never being seen anywhere else, but uh, I can't imagine him not becoming a DVD you or think, something. You'd think it'd have to, and I hope so. I hope so. You can, yeah, some I of the matches so. on that card are ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it, and and because it's the first time ever for Impact vs ROH guys, like it just looks so good. And how can you pass that up? Like you're gonna make so much money on those DVDs, man. I'll buy a DVD, release it on DVD, Chris. I know you're listening. <laughs> Did you see this week that Dave Meltzer said that Chris Jericho is destined for Impact? Oh, I see. I'm a bit. I'm a bit mm, about this because exactly what I because you like what they're doing and exactly now. what yeah. I said before. Like Chris Jericho, don't get me wrong. He can still he can still work, but but then again, they're still going back to that 2006 2017 TNA. Eh? Oh, let's let's sign the old see, WWE guy. I don't think they are. I think if you if you get Chris Jericho in there, or even if you get Rey Mysterio in there, right? These are guys that are still in the prime of their career. They're still putting out like some of Chris Jericho's work from this year has been his best work ever. Yeah, I just don't want them to kind of fall back into that trap. If they sign one, there could possibly be others. Right. So yeah, I get what you're saying, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's just because he and Don Callis are friends. And they've got that Canadian connection. They came up together. And I think that it'll be a matter of similar to what he's done over in New Japan. So he had some friends over in New Japan and they hooked it up. Like, come over, have a couple of matches. He's gone over. He's had a couple of matches. He's won a title. He's going to drop a title, you know, and and then call it a day. And he's had some of his best work. I could see him doing a similar thing in Impact, just coming in, you know, maybe having a match with Brian Cage, putting Brian Cage over, something like that, you know. And then how good would Chris Jericho versus Austin Aries be? But yes, well, I didn't want to say Austin Aries because I don't want him coming in and facing off against the world champion, you know. But but yeah, Austin Aries and Chris Jericho would be must see. Like yeah, so I don't know. It's it's only a rumor at this point, but apparently it looks like Jericho might be heading to Impact. We'll keep our eye on it. Good stuff for Impact. What do you think about the next person who I've got down here, Scarlet Bordeaux? She's arriving with Bobo carrying her bags. I reckon it's a ch- it's a bit of a change from it's kind of like um she's bringing bringing the sexiness back to the Davis. The- yeah. Oh man, if her entrance music is "I'm bringing sexy back." <laughs> by Justin Timberlake, that would be perfect for her. <laughs> you should have that be her entrance music. But just with a different different sort of tone in it. Yeah. Oh, no, I like the, the, the tune that she has. But I, I think it's such a great gimmick, personally. Because you've got all the women's revolution stuff going on and everything. That's and she's what I just mean. Like, she's just like, no, I'm sexy. I think we should have a pillow fight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a good heel character. It's it's gonna work and it's gonna bring that bring that heat as well. Yeah. I love Bobo as well, carrying her bags. Like he's he's just he was the announcer last week and now he's just her manservant. <laughs> <laughs> That's how quick men can crumble around her. <laughs> uh so we got uh this this week's GWN flashback was Chris Saban and Petey Williams. Which Chris Saban won. We'll skip that. Yeah, was, I mean, there's nothing really to talk about. It's just a, a flashback. Yeah. I, I do think, you know, I know that Impact are listening because I've always said, don't just roll a freaking clip, like intro it, say what it's about, say what's happening, like let people know. And the last few weeks they've done that. They've actually had Josh Matthews introduce the clip. So thanks for doing that for me, guys. Yeah, thanks, Impact. Thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks for listening. And thanks for taking my advice on board. It's good to know that you take us seriously as fans and that you want to grow as a company. That's the kind of thing I like to see. <laughs> we all want to see it. Yeah. And then we get Falabar and KM. They're still on TV. At least they've been they've been slimmed down. They're starting to slim down for you. Yeah. Yeah. They're still on TV, though. I. Uh, so... KM's lecturing Fala Bar because he's trying to give him this inner mean streak, and Bar just keeps saying, Bar, Bar. <laughs> and then somehow KM understands that 
And he's like, no, I can't be more like you. You need to be more like me. And then Bar's like, Bar, Bar. It's fucking stupid, man. <laughs> uh, 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 that's all I have to say on it. I always watch Impact late, so my daughter's already asleep when I'm watching it or whatever, and so she never she never gets to see it, but I, I bet she would love Bala Bar. She would. Oh, yeah, and then, and then she would walk around hitting her head saying Bar and acting like she's stupid, and I'll get upset with her because I'm like, you know how to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Just annoys me, man. I don't know why. I, I, at this point, I accept that it's a completely irrational hatred. Yeah. Yeah. But it's I I just I can't stand it. So then we get a rip off of Being the Elite. This was really fun. So uh, do you watch Being the Elite? No, no. Yeah, no. I know. I know. You're not. You're not a full on indie guy. So that's okay. So Being the Elite, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is obviously the Bullet Club's YouTube show. It started with the Young Bucks. It's kind of like a travel diary, but they've ended up putting in like little skits and comedy, and they've brought more characters in, and it's really fun. And they've got this bit that they always do where they've got. It's just, it's from a point of view camera and you just see the people's hands and they're pointing and they're doing this voice. They're like, now, Marty, what you got to do is, and they, they're they always like record executives or lawyers or things like that. And they're giving advice, right? As what, and so that's what they have with the Scarlet. That's what they did yeah. with Scarlet Bordeaux this week. Yeah. So it was kind of like a, a knockoff of being the elite, but these guys all know each other. So I, I don't think it was, you know, anything untoward. I'm sure they'd asked about it yeah. and stuff because not. Don Callis is on all in. Like it's it's all they're they're all a big family at this point. But I thought it was really fun that they did this as a knockoff of being the elite. But then the network executives they're having a go at someone for bothering them. But then Scarlet Bordeaux shows up and they're just like, oh yeah, anything, anything, darling. What do you want? Anything for you? <laughs> anything for you. We, we we're never too big to talk to the talent. <laughs> <laughs> and she's getting all on the desk and being seductive and saying she doesn't feel comfortable getting in the ring with all these girls because they're so mean to her. And and so they give her a talk show instead. So she's not going to get in the ring yet, which I've been saying, I hope she can back it up in the ring. But I really love the way they're taking it because now she doesn't even have to back it up in the ring because she's just like, I'm just a talk show host. Why are you being so mean to me? Yeah. Like it's, it's, oh it's man, they're bring- setting her up to be the top heel for it's sure. Good, yeah, that's exactly what I was just about to say. They're just going to, just going to keep on working her slowly, slowly, slowly. And she's just going to come out, bang. And everyone is going to hate her. <laughs> yeah. I I would love it if when she does finally get in the ring, she has just an absolute vicious streak. Like, have her just avoid Tessa Blanchard for like a year. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not a year. Have her like just avoid Tessa Blanchard for, for six months, you know? Yeah, don't put them. And then when she finally angel. gets in the ring, when she finally gets her in the ring, Tessa Blanchard's like, all right, this is going to be easy and doesn't take it seriously. And then boom. She just gets her ass kicked, like hair pulling, rope usage, just vicious heel work. That would be really fun. Imagine she wrestles still in her high heels and then steps on their head. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, just oh. the dirty wrestling. Yeah, there's just so many great ways they can go with this character. I'm really excited for Scarlet Bordeaux. We know I'm a big fan of women's wrestling. And so to have this character that's like a throwback. Especially, especially to- with people like me and you who've watched the women's division go from go from what it was to what it is now and then yeah. having Scarlet Bordeaux come in and just bring you back at bring you back in in time yeah and i i, I really do hope that she can go in the ring though cuz i've i've never seen her wrestle so we'll move on to uh, Matt Sydal versus Pentagon good match Sydal was working the leg to take out the aerial offense of Pentagon but as he's doing that, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you're an idiot, Sidal. Like, so much for your third eye. Like, Pentagon is so much more than just a flyer. Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head. That's, that's, I mean, it was just it was just such an insane strategy for the guy who supposedly has his third eye open and can see inside everyone. It, you know. And he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, so th- I don't think there really is much more to say about that. It was... For a guy that has his third eye open and can see inside you, supposedly, it, he had a stupid strategy because Pentagon is like it was almost like he looked at him. He's like, "Ah, oh, this guy wears a mask. He likes to fly." I'm saying that Pentagon, <laughs> you know? Pentagon's like a different, different beast when it comes to luchador. If you get what I'm saying, like he's different. He's just like an all round type of type of luchador, not just one of those high flying, 
jumping around. Well, that's the thing is WCW and WWF, WWE have conditioned us to think luchador, mask, aerial yeah. assault. But it's, it's not yeah. the case. Like when you go to watch actual lucha wrestling in Mexico, they've got technicians, they've got brawlers, they've got everything, just like a regular wrestling show. It's not yeah. all flying. It's just that the flying stuff is the only stuff that got yeah. imported. And it's pretty much because WWE have put that image in everyone's head. See, like, I can, I can kind of understand it, that he's gone to the high-flying thing, because me growing up watching only really WWE, whenever someone was in a mask, yeah. they were always jumping around. So, right. I kind of get that in a way. Like, so, so Adele went went for the legs because he wears a mask, because maybe he's just a high flyer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can get why the assumption would be there, but I just think, yeah, considering Matt Seidel's character, yeah. it was kind of a stupid mistake to make. And Pentagon gets the win with the Fear Factor uh, package pile driver. He, he did it yeah. running. He's, he's, he's changed which was... the last couple of weeks. When he was versus OVE, it was with yeah. with Phoenix jumping, jumping on their back. Yeah, yeah, doing the spike, spike, spike package. package. Yeah, but but I've never seen him do it running before. That was real, real. That's different. another move that's pretty dangerous as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once again, package pile drivers, neck yeah. box, man, scares the hell out of me. Uh, straight after the match, over here on the big screen. So I guess we're gonna, I guess we're gonna continue that. Maybe I don't know because they weren't addressing just Pentagon or anything. Shaving, but they on another head. Basically, Sammy's having a go at at them like he's like i'm sick of losing i'm sick of being a loser and he complaining that he looks like an idiot and now they have to look like idiots too so he makes he makes jake christ shave dave christ's head yeah really weird uh, i think I he's think just maybe going next week psycho. jake christ's hair is gonna get shaved so yeah yeah that would make sense i i think that he should uh form a team with eddie edwards and and feud with the Christs. <laughs> he's he's gone psychos. legit psycho at this point. Just over losing his yeah. hair. Well, I mean, he was killed in Lucha Underground and he didn't come back this psycho. Remember when they said, um, <laughs> remember when he said his hair's been everywhere, Bot? So I can kind of, like, they've kind of built up yeah. that, that his hair was, like, that much important to him, so. It's, it's just weird to me. I just find it weird. Uh, then we get the LAX and uh, OGs bit that I talked about briefly before. So, which we spoke about having a street fight. Yeah, so they, they were. Um, I think. Fight. I think that match will be for next week. Yeah, you think so? I think they might I hold do, off. I, I think they might field really. into New York and do some kind of New York, like you know when they do like the Eddie Edwards had and Sammy Callahan had the match in the woods, or you know like Final Deletion and they film it somewhere yeah. else. I think they might do something like that with LAX and OGs, which I I would be really excited for. They could for. do. They could do. I didn't think of that. But then doing that, I, I would say do it at Bound for Glory, but doing one of those at a pay-per-view is kind of kind of dodgy because you've got the crowd and the, you've got the audience just sitting there watching a screen. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm curious to see where it goes, though. One note that I had for this segment was – Conan does all the catchphrases, you know, LAX 5150, you can stop a revolution, but you can't stop a rev- you can stop a revolutionary, but you can't stop a revolution. And then their music plays and just the crowd, like, so it's like this real gangster music and the crowd all start dancing, but they're just very, very white Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just fun to see a bunch of white Canadians north of the border <laughs> trying to get their groove on to the OG's gangster rap music. <laughs> I found it personally entertaining. Oh, uh, no, it was a good segment. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs promo. What did you think about this? Saying that he is the monster. So I guess the implication is that Johnny Impact is going to have a match with Jimmy Jacobs, not with Congo Kong, which is a nice little twist. I think I love Jimmy Jacobs. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he's, yeah, I reckon he's awesome. He's one of those guys where I'm surprised he's never had a big run, you know? Yeah, he's he's pretty much, yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised yeah. he's never done anything in WWE because Vince McMahon would not get Jimmy Jacobs as a person. No. Yeah, he wears no. nail polish. Vince McMahon immediately would just be like, what is this? <laughs> so, 
I, I love Jimmy Jacobs and and I I I, I want to see him do more, but I guess he's sort of in the twilight of his career at this point too. Yeah, he's not. I think just stay in impact, do what he needs to do, have a good life. <laughs> yeah, if anyone doesn't know uh, Jimmy Jacobs' best work, go back and watch his stuff with Age of the Fall in Ring of Honor and what have you, and Pro Wrestling Gorilla. And I'm pretty sure Age of the Fall was everywhere, but they were Age yeah. of the Fall. Yes, so that, good. Like when we, I say he's never had a big a run. Wall back too. Yeah, that's that's yeah, like that was ages ago. Yeah, mid two thousands. But yeah, but I just think that you know when I say he's never had a big run, that was a big run. The whole all the Age of the Fall stuff was a big run. That was very popular. Were but, Age of the Fall in TNA? I don't know to be honest with you because I didn't really watch TNA. I'm pretty sure they were. Uh, when I have a hang, on, I'll do some Google foo. Says Ring of Honor. Full Impact Pro, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, All Action Wrestling. So, no. No. They weren't TNA. No. But mm. Age of the Fall obviously encompassed uh, Jimmy Jacobs. You also had Joey Matthews in there. You had uh, Brody Lee, who is currently Luke Harper. Tyler Black, who is currently Seth Rollins. So, this was a stable that, that sort of took place on the indies, and they were fantastic. And Jimmy Jacobs was kind of the leader of that and just... Uh, yeah, they had definitely Zach check Gowan that out. He did have well. a big run. He, yeah, Zach Gowan was in there. So he pe- did have a big run. Yeah. But, yeah. But he's never had a big solo run. No. Which... So... I don't know. I, he, he's good at what he does. Just I just think I just think that the whole... the In the promo, so he's talking about... Because Johnny Impact wants Congo Kong. And in the promo, he's like, you asked for the monster. Well, you're going to get it. But be careful. Because I am the monster. And I really like that idea that you you look at these two and you think he's the monster's handler because he's the little guy and Congo Kong is the monster. But no, Jimmy Jacobs is the real monster. And, and if you let him off the leash, like Congo Kong is nothing compared to Jimmy Jacobs. I like that idea and I hope they run with that and I hope they go with that to the top because Jimmy Jacobs, Austin Aries would be really good to see. Yeah. Pretty much anyone with Austin Aries would be really good to see. <laughs> so any. Anyone, Austin Aries will do a good job. But, but specifically because of what happens next, Jimmy Jacobs with Congo Kong. So in the main event, we have Austin Aries and Eddie Edwards. Really fun match. So Austin Aries wants to have a damn wrestling match, damn it. But Eddie Edwards just wants to fight. And he's being unhinged and he wants to brawl. And so Austin Aries is like trying to get away from him. Like, what is this? I want to have a wrestling match. I, I thought it was really fun. <laughs> The story they told, it went from the promo earlier right through to the match. Yeah. Really good story. And they also had Eddie Edwards' dirty wrestling, pretty much. Biting yeah, Eddie's finger. Yeah, just being completely off the wall. Glow blows. Yeah, ultimately you get a ref bump, and Eddie gets the win, but there's no ref to count it. The crowd chanted to seven. As yeah, well. I'm really... That's the thing is I'm, I'm super curious about. Is Eddie Edwards a face or a heel? Does it matter? We discussed this on the last oh, – it wasn't last the last podcast. It was – um, I think it was our very first one that we done. We discussed yeah. – oh, that was when Eddie started turning towards heel, and we're like, what's going to turn him back to a face? To yeah. A face? And there then I go. thought after Slammiversary – I thought after Slammiversary when, you know, he wrapped out the Tommy Dreamer stuff and he was given the kendo stick, like, you're the innovator of violence now. And and it looked like he and Alicia made up, but then I guess they didn't because they had that spot on Impact last week. So I'm just really curious. Like, I don't understand what he is. Yeah, neither do I. Do they, do they slowly – does this turn him into a – like, does this match turn him into a face? Well, because essentially he got the win, so that's the face. That's the face spot. Is you get the win, but the ref's not there to count it. And then we had Killer Cross well, show up, and Killer Cross attacks Eddie Edwards. Now he's a face. I didn't want to say anything before because we hadn't mentioned it yet. But, yeah, so it, you'd think that makes him the face, but he doesn't act like a. Fa- it's a very interesting little program that they've got with Eddie Edwards. But yeah, Killer Cross. Showing up, and uh, it looks like he's aligned with Austin Aries because the announcers even were putting over like he's going to attack Austin Aries, but he didn't. And then he posed behind him with Austin Aries. And then when you think back to last week, who did Killer Cross attack? He attacked Anthony Corelli. Yeah. 
formerly known and as Santino anyone, Marilla. It's and it's had something to do with Austin Aries. With Austin Aries. How long has Austin Aries been behind this killer cross stuff? That's another thing. Are they going to build this angle from there? Yeah. I thought it was such a great way to end the show because the, it raised so many questions because of the Anthony Corelli bit last week. You know, this if if Killer Cross has been acting on Austin Aries' orders, it brings up stuff with Petey Williams because Killer Cross attacked Petey Williams. Austin Aries and Petey Williams go way back, so why did you order him to attack me? It brings up stuff with the entire <laughs> the roster, really, and it makes Austin Aries solidly top heel and Killer Cross the enforcer. I really, really like it. I just think they're going to go from strength to strength with this. This angle is going to going to be very enjoyable there's so many ways it can go and that's what they've done here like they've they've made it so it's not predictable on where they're going to go with it next yeah and i've said the same thing with with what scarlet bordeaux there's so many ways they can go with that there's so many ways they can go with the ali sue young stuff i think the impact with their storytelling at the moment are just they're just nailing it at every turn and it's only going to keep getting better it's making me really happy to see. So, um, what was your moment of the night? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one on, on this show. I think everything that wasn't Falabar and KM. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'd I'd probably have to give it. I'd probably have to give it to if if we're talking match of the night, then it's probably going to go to the main event because I like the story they told. But if we're talking moment of the night, I'm, I'm probably going to stick that with Scarlet Bordeaux. Scarlet Bo- Bordeaux. Yeah, just just because I love that character and I love what they're doing with well, it. I think I'm going to go with the the last segment of the show, the very last segment. Killer Cross attacking Eddie Edwards. Yep. That for me is going to be the moment of the night yep. because I just don't know where that's going to go. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time to be a fan of Impact Wrestling. I'm really glad I've gotten back into yeah, it. Yeah, I'm glad I have too. Like I said before, if you're not watching Impact, you're missing out. You're definitely missing out. I guess that does it for us here at the Impact Zone on the B-plus podcast. Where can people find you, Jay? On Facebook, Jay Davis, pretty much. Just send me a friend request so we can get chatting about Impact if you want. There's obviously the B-plus podcast page as well that you can like. Yeah, so that is the B Plus Wrestling on Facebook. We also have at the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter, the B Plus Wrestling on Instagram, which I know you posted a couple of things last night while you were at Wrestling Go. Yes, which is very hard to keep up with. Yeah, man. Instagram, when you're doing live stories at shows, I tried to do it for Riot City as well. And it's because you're trying to pop the filter on and the hashtag and yeah. all that wow. stuff. And it's like, whoa, man. Like, I'm trying to watch the wrestling and enjoy myself as well. The things we do for you people. Pretty but, much. <laughs> uh, but uh, as always, you can find us on iTunes. Please give us a five-star review. It really helps with the visibility. We're also on YouTube now. We're taking over the world. We're everywhere. Did you know, Jay, we have listeners in Iran? We have listeners everywhere, man. And Sweden. Everywhere. Like, repeat listeners that have listened to more than one episode. This is crazy to me. Do you know why? That's because the B-plus podcast is taking over. Yeah. We're taking over. <laughs> Hold one. Andre! You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh, my God! So, no speak English. Dummy! Yeah. Goodbye and good night. All two are mine. This is the worst town I've ever been in. It's still real to me, damn it! Coming! Yeah! Hold three! The moss covered!